the Green Prepper, five foolproof ways to protect and store long-term food storage forever. Hey YouTube, this is The Green Prepper and today we're going to give you five ways to be able to protect your food storage forever. And these are foolproof ways. There are many things that can happen to your long-term food storage uh, that will actually destroy or, you know, just completely kill the nutritional value of your long-term food storage. And this is going to give you the ability to have it for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and it's not going to degrade and it's going to keep everything away except for maybe Mother Nature. Uh, but we're going to give you the foolproof ways and the steps, tips, and tricks to be able to do it because we want you to be able to prep your food and then not run into a lot of the mistakes uh, that other people have had. I don't know about you, but I know that several people out there have gone and they've had rice, beans, flour, milk, and they open it up when they're ready to use it and they find these little buggers in there. The weevils, all the different bugs that come with food, uh, you know, the, the moths and all that kind of stuff. And uh, of course, you know, some people have even found rats. Now the thing is, you know, what a lot of people don't know is all of the foods you know, um, you know, rice, beans, flowers, they all have microscopic bug eggs that you cannot see. Most of them are coming from the store. They, they don't even come from your house. They come in the package and they were already there. And as you have them for long periods of time and you have them available with oxygen, uh, you allow these bugs to hatch and then they feast on your stockpile, whether it's rice, flowers, grains, beans, all that kind of stuff, bugs are there. And whether you want to admit it or not, uh, you know, you have bug eggs and bugs in your food. Now, the question is, what do you want to do with that? How do you want to protect yourself, your stockpile, and make sure that these bugs aren't devouring your food when you need it most? All right, so your foolproof plan is going to start with ball glass canning jars. Now, a lot of you may say, oh, well, glass is breakable, it's easily damaged, and yes, that is true, but the thing is with the ball jars, they are pretty strong construction because they're made to actually go through high heats when you're doing canning. But the other thing is, is if you put these in a stable place, where they're not going to go all over the place. Um, these are going to be your best protection. And the reason that is, is because if you have mylar bags, if you have uh, plastic pails, rats can eat through those. They eat through wiring, they eat through walls, they can eat through plastic, but they will not eat through glass. So one, this is going to keep away the rats. When you have your beans, when you have your rice, when you have your flowers, when you have all that kind of stuff, you are not going to have an issue with rats, which is one of the biggest predators of stockpile foods. They will de devour it, you know, they will add, uh, you know, rat droppings to it, which will contaminate it, and they will just eat your stuff up, and they will smile and laugh. All right, so uh, first things first is going to be the ball canning jars. Now, a lot of people, um, if you're scared about them clanging together and stuff like that, a lot of people around the center will put a big, large rubber band around every single one of the jars. So when you put them in the box, you know, they're not going to clang together. It's going to give it a little bit more reliability, okay? We don't really do that, uh, but it's an option that you can do. So basically what we're going to do is you just need to have a canning funnel, all right, and we're going to show you the different steps and processes. All right, so if you were doing beans, you would just put your beans in there and fill it up to the top. All right, quick and easy like that. So basically all you would do is you would pull off your funnel and this is ready to process. So the first process that we're going to show you requires lids off, okay? So one of them is going to take lids on, one of them is going to take lids off. So this is going to be the first one. And what we're going to show you is called oven canning. Now the great thing about oven canning is you will put it uh, in the oven and you will put it in at 225 and you're going to place it in there for two hours. All right. Now what you're going to do is you need to be very careful because these 
really weren't meant for dry canning and uh, the heat can actually make them break if you jiggle them around and get all crazy with them. But what you would do, you would set your oven at 225 and let it preheat and get ready to go. Once it hits 225, you would fit all the available um, jars with no lids on top on top of your cookie sheet. All right, and then what you're going to do is uh, you're going to place it in there with lids off and you'll close it up and you will actually process that at two hours. As soon as it's done, you want to turn off the oven, let it sit for five minutes, and then what you would do is you would pull them out. All right, don't pull them out with your hands, but you would pull them out and then you would wipe the lid like you were canning and you would put a lid on there and seal it up. And what it's going to do, you're going to let it sit, you know, for a couple hours and it's going to give you the airtight seal like so. All right, so the great thing is, is that will heat all of the objects in here and we'll make sure that it kills any uh, larva, any eggs, any bugs, all that kind of stuff and bacteria. Now this is not uh, suggested by the USDA because um, you know you may get down to the center and it may not completely heat. All right, and if it doesn't completely heat, then you may still have some bugs or bacteria or stuff like that in there. Now, people have been doing this for hundreds of years, okay? Maybe not in an oven, but they've been doing this for hundreds of years, and not many people have died, okay? <laughs> you know, dying is, is a bad thing, you know? Um, but this is a really, really good way to be able to do that. Once you have it processed, remember, you put the lid on and you tighten it up, all right? The next process is a more foolproof plan, and this is the one that we like to use the most. This one would be lids on, all right? So basically what you're gonna do, you're going to pack your rice, your beans, your flour, stuff like that. You're gonna put the lid on, all right? And you can also put this on a pan if you desire, or you can just put all of your jars in here. And then what you will do is you will leave it in the freezer. All right, and we have a sub-zero freezer. We can set it to whatever temperature that we want, but if you have a regular freezer, what you're going to do is you're going to leave it in here, all right, for one week, five days. Now, some people say three days, four days, five days, whatever. We do five days just to make sure that it's safe. And what it does is it allows the cold enough time to get all the way through and to kill any eggs, any larva, any bugs uh, that are microscopic that you don't have the ability to see right now but will hatch later on. Now, we like this. Some people do the freezer and then do the oven just to make sure, but I have, have never had an issue with putting them in the freezer. We have not had any issues after that. So this is the uh, process that we prefer and with this process you put it in here for a week when you're done you come out and then we're going to show you the next step what you'll do then is you're going to take a food saver now with this food saver this is going to uh, pull out probably 80 90 uh, to 100 percent of the oxygen what you will want uh, is you're going to probably want to get a large mouth and a small mouth adapter uh, this one is a large mouth this one is a small mouth and basically what it is is the machine all right comes with a little plastic tube and what you do is you plug it into the uh, oxygen port all right then you plug it into the adapter, whichever uh, the large mouth or the small mouth adapter, and there's going to be a couple of buttons on here. So this one here is going to be normal, and then it's going to be dry. All right, and when you do that, uh, you'll have the ability to be able to hit the canister button, and the canister button will suck out all of the air. Now, one thing we do suggest: some people just can it just like this, so they put the lid on. All right and then they vacuum seal it and they pull the air out. Now like I said, one of the biggest concerns is that you may still have a little bit of bacteria in there, contamination or whatever, and one thing that can aid in that is oxygen. All right, so this will take out most of the oxygen, but some people just to give it a little extra step will actually even throw an oxygen absorber in the top, you know, like a 300cc oxygen absorber, 
and then they will do this. And that will guarantee that you will not have any oxygen infiltration inside. Uh, it will also guarantee that you don't have any buildup of bacteria or anything like that uh, because there will be no oxygen present. So we don't always use oxygen absorbers, uh, you know, especially if we've done the freezer method. Um, but it is an added bonus and it gives you the ability to guarantee that you're not going to have an issue. So uh, once we do that, we put on the top, you take your little adapter, you just slide it right over. All right. And then you hit the canister button. All right. And what is it? it does is it actually sucks out the oxygen And then once it's done, the lights come off. Now, one very important thing that you want to make sure that you do, a lot of people will just try to take this adapter off. What you want to do first is you want to take off the adapter hose, and then you'll pull the lid off. All right, so once you pull the lid off, what you want to do is you actually want to pick it up and hold it by the lid to make sure that it has a really good seal. Now, when you put it into storage, you want to make sure that, you know, it has sealed it with the air bubble. Some people will leave the lid on for added protection, uh, or you can just leave it like this. All right, so when you come back to it, whether you have this on or not, you just want to check the seal and make sure that it's there, um, you know, so that it's not broken, and you will know that it has maintained maintained, you know, the ability to be able to take care of your food. Now, the great thing with this is that you will never have problems with pests once you do one of these two things or do both. Um, so that is the big thing. You will not have pests. You won't have people in your family like, ew, look at the bugs, stuff like that. You know, it could always be added protein, but, uh, you know, you won't have those issues. So one, you have eliminated rats, you've eliminated bugs and eggs and larvae and all that kind of stuff. Now we're going to show you the other secret that makes this a foolproof plan to maintain your nutrients and keep these products forever. All right, so once you're done with all of those processes, you just want to make sure that you put your items into a cool, dark place so that you eliminate the ability for the light to get into it, the heat to get into it, and this allows you to eliminate all of the concerns and the hazards that destroy your food stockpiles. Once again, this has been an effective way to be able to make sure you have foolproof protection of your long-term food storage. Remember that this is going to be good for any dry canning of oatmeal, rice, whole wheat flour, white flour, cake mixes, potato flakes, beans, lentils, and, and these are going to be the things that are going to give you uh, the ability to cook. Uh, you know, healthy, nutritious, filling meals uh, for your family. Now, as you see, you know, we've done some stockpiling and we've done, you know, canned foods and stuff like that. Uh, but the things that are going to last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, those are the most important things to stockpile. Uh, we actually have a list of several things that never go bad. We'll actually have a link below so that you can check that out. Um, but uh, we have a list of things that will never expire. And those are the things that you want to stockpile, most especially dry canning to be able to get all of these hazards away from it so that you can enjoy your stockpiled foods, your long-term storage foods, um, you know, for years to come whenever you or your family needs them. Or desires them. So hopefully this information has been helpful. If you get a chance, please give us a big thumbs up. Please throw it on Google Plus and Facebook. And we will also have links below if you want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, all that kind of stuff. You can go ahead and check out the links below. We definitely appreciate your support. Um, if you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share with us, please let us know. And uh, you know, we just want to thank you for all of your help in this community as well as your support and the ability to, you know, just help us grow and learn. So once again, this has been the five foolproof ways to protect and store long-term food storage forever. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.